What's going on guys? Welcome back to another After Effects tutorial. My name is Colin Ross. Today we're taking a look at the new star transition from Amir Zachary's POV edit. Let's hop right in and learn how I did it. If I preview here, here's the final timeline. Amir opens up his hand, got the Hershey's kiss. Stars start to appear in the scene. Charlie spins in and then we have a nice zoom transition here that transitions to the regular clip. This is going to be a pretty complicated tutorial, but I'm going to do my best to break down every single step. It might be a little long, but I think if you take the time to watch the whole thing, you'll really learn a lot about After Effects and some of the caveats that I go through when deciding how to tackle a shot. Let's start by dragging our clip into a new composition right here, and this will create a new composition with all the attributes that your footage have. I'm going to go through on this clip right till about there where you can still see a little bit of the horizon, and I'm going to hit Control Shift D on my clip. Something that I had to do is extend my 3D camera because obviously After Effects is isn't gonna be able to pick up, you know, noisy sky. I'm only gonna 3D track this beginning portion, and I'm gonna get right into that. Go into the effects and presets, type in 3D camera tracking, drag this onto your footage, and then After Effects is gonna do its best to try and solve your camera. Also, what you wanna do is you wanna go to advanced, and where it says auto detect, change it to a tripod pan. Here, there wasn't any 3D perspective movement, it was just a mirror looking up into the stars. So this is gonna go through, track your footage. This will take shorter or longer depending on how powerful your computer is, but just let it do its thing, and then, yeah, I'm gonna fast forward this. Once this is done, it'll solve your camera, and as you can see from these target points, it tracks your scene very well. All I have to do here is right-click two of the points and click Create Null in a Camera. I'm gonna hit V on my keyboard to move the um, null up in position to over here to this cloud. This will make more sense in a second. So right here, uh, your camera ends here because this is the layer is tracking. Just go ahead and extend that out. Hit U on your keyboard, that'll bring up all the keyframes for your camera. Since it was a tripod pan, it's only affecting the position and orientation. So what you wanna do is go into right here, click where it says one view and click two view horizontal and this is going to create two views and one of them is going to have your camera and the other is going to be what that camera is seeing this is your camera in 3d space if you scrub through here it's going to be a little laggy because it's two viewports your camera is moving how it does in the scene you can see that corresponding here in this image once you reach the end here because after effects wouldn't have anything to hold on here in the sky we have to essentially manually extend to this 3d camera so i'm going to scroll forward a few frames here if you scroll through on your mouse you can zoom in closer to the camera i'm going to hit w on my keyboard and I want to rotate down on the X rotation until it's back where it was on that cloud like right about there then I'm just gonna go forward a few more frames and then drag it down to that position again and then go forward some more frames then just do your best to guess how far it went down it probably went down somewhere around like right there this is a difficult thing to grasp what we're doing is we're extending the panning down of our camera if you're trying to make your own video like this um, what I would recommend is shooting on a cloudy night where when you pan up it's not just clear sky if there were clouds everywhere it would be easy for after effects to track and hold on to points but since there's only clouds at the base of the skyline it's super hard for it to track basically create a fake 3d camera extension let's switch back to one view and work on creating the space environment if we go right here to the original space background you can see these are all artificial stars they are not real and we're gonna be learning how to create those today kind of creates like a hyper speed Star Wars transition twirly thing so we're gonna start off by creating a new composition we're gonna make sure that is 4k 3840 by 2160 we're gonna right click and create a new solid we want to create this with the same color that we want our stars to be so I'm gonna kind of pick like a very faint blue to create the stars go into the effects and presets tab and type in CC ball action I know this is kind of a funny sounding effect just drag it onto your solid and then we essentially want to drag the scatter up in insane amount probably somewhere around like 800 obviously this is looking way too huge I'm gonna change the ball size to like 10 maybe change the ball size to like 14 and grid spacing like 3 no I say 2 2 looks best then we're gonna right click and create a new camera these settings should work I'm gonna hit ok if you hit the two view again if you move this camera it moves in almost like a 3d particle even though CC ball action is only on a 2d layer you can move through it in a 3d sense which is pretty freaking cool I'm going to click back to the one view. On the original footage, the stars were spinning just slightly, just to give it kind of a creative flair. Obviously, stars aren't spinning in real time, but you also obviously can't zoom through the stars. So if you don't want to do that, you don't have to rotate the stars. But if you do want to rotate the stars, hit R on your keyboard, set a keyframe for the Z rotation, go forward maybe like five seconds, and then just change this beginning value to one. This will make your whole scene rotate 
one time over a period of five seconds and this might be going too fast I'm actually gonna change this to like a hundred degrees you really don't want that much rotation you just want like a natural floating effect if we preview that that's looking pretty good right there I'm gonna go and create another new composition and rename this space so this is gonna be our entire space scene I'm also gonna rename the composition we just made with the stars I'm gonna go in and rename it stars tutorial and then I'm just going to drag the stars tutorial composition into the space composition that we just created. Then I'm going to go back into our regular composition and drag in our space composition. And I'm just going to drop the opacity on this to like 50% so you can still kind of see through. What you want to do is you want to make this space layer a 3D layer and then rotate it so it's kind of flat. So you want to take it to the last frame where your camera pans up and just position it so that it completely fills the scene. I'm also going to scale this up just slightly here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the rectangle tool, hold it down, and then select the ellipse tool, and then double click on that. I'm going to move this final point up a skosh. Then I'm going to feather this mask out so it kind of blends into the environment really nicely. I'm also going to go in the blending modes for our space scene and change it to add. And this is going to make it blend a lot more naturally with our scene. This is also the part of the tutorial where I'm going to say this is where it's going to require some customization from your point of view and what you think looks the best. It's not all about what I think looks the best. It's about how you want to put your creative twist on the effect. I can notice that the stars are looking a little weak. It looks like there's really not that many. What I can do there is go into the stars tutorial. I can go into the CC ball action. Maybe I can bump the ball size up to like 15 or like 20. If I go back into our regular composition, you know, the stars are going to be looking much more intense. There's some weird big stars going on, but that also like we're going for kind of that dreamy look. So that's not a huge concern. I'm trying to make the stars look as realistic as possible. I would keep that bump down to like 10 ish. Now that we have the basis of our star scene here, we have to figure out how we're going to add Charlie as a constellation in this scene. So inside of our space composition, go ahead and drop whatever footage you're using into the composition. So I'm going to use this piece right here and I'm going to alt left bracket trim that up and I'm going to right click time and click freeze frame. And this is going to freeze this footage so that's the only portion of it that's going to play. And then we're going to start adding our effects to turn her into a constellation. So go into the effects and presets, type in find edges and type in find edges. And we're going to drag that onto the layer and then we're going to go into the effects and presets tab and type in invert and we're going to drop this on this is going to flip the alpha of that layer go into curves and drag this in between invert and find edges and we're going to kind of create like a crazy crazy contrasted image where the blacks are super super crushed type in saturation add a hue and saturation effect and we're going to drop the master saturation down to negative 100 and this is just going to ensure that your effect has no color still from the image it's going to make it perfectly black and white we're going to be using this layer as an alpha mat so click your footage and we're going to mask out like this right around so there's no additional anything except for charlie boom 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 Boom. There's one more effect we need to add to the Charlie layer here and type in Unmolt into After Effects. This is a free third party plugin. I'll leave it in the description. Us uh, from Red Giant. This converts your image to an alpha layer from the black parts of your image and the white parts of your image. It keys out this black and creates actual alpha from that layer. Then you want to drag in the space background JPEG to your scene. This is a very high resolution star photo made by another YouTuber named Vincent Young. I'll leave a link in the description for his website where you can click on that link and go and download this image. He doesn't upload extremely often anymore, but he has some great After Effects tutorials and he made a video with this as a free download. So hop over to the website and download this this drag this underneath your tunnels layer on the track mat here if you don't see it hit toggle switch modes until you do see it and change it to alpha mat as you can see kind of faintly here it turns Charlie into more of a starish outline it's super dark though so we want to go to the effects and presets tab type in curves drop it over to the space image and then just bump it up like way up to the point of almost overexposure and as you can see this creates more of a it's not a perfect constellation effect but it creates more of a constellation effect than just the original straight outline. It makes it look like she's kind of made out of stars. It's definitely not perfect, but I think it looks creative and looks a lot more like stars than just this traditional outline. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do here though, is I'm going to scale Charlie down, maybe to like that size and put her as close to the middle as I can. And when you go over into the other composition, now you can see she shows up in here and she is a part of the sky, kind of in a constellation looking effect. 
But as you can see, she's not in the middle of the composition here. So I'm gonna go over to the space composition. And with my solid selected, I'm gonna hit Control R, click this black, you can drag in rulers as guides. And I'm gonna drag this in so I can tell what the center is. And then I'm gonna move Charlie so that she is in the center. I'm also gonna hit Y on my keyboard and move the point she rotates to the center as well. <clears throat> so now as you can see, she's in the center of our layer and it's looking perfect. So in the original, the next step is how are we gonna make our camera zoom in? This is relatively simple. All we have to do here is you have to pick the point you want your camera to zoom in. I'm gonna choose right here as we're still panning up. And if you go to your 3D camera, you can drop down everything and click on the camera options and click on zoom and keyframe that and then go forward a few frames, drag this. And then also you want to select right here and uh, create another keyframe for the position. So then when you go through to this last frame, you can drag it down on the Y axis until the edge of the frame down here is in play. That's looking pretty good for me. Um, what I'm going to do is maybe I'm gonna select both of the position and the zoom keyframes, drag them a little in so it's a little quicker. And I'm gonna right click and click keyframe assistant easy ease. And this is gonna ease the keyframe so it's not as harsh when it finishes. I'm gonna drag it out so it's not quite that fast, back to where it was. This is gonna be the basis for how we finish this up. At the start of this zoom, we wanna start transitioning into the actual next scene of Charlie. In this composition, make sure you're on the first keyframe, go over to your space composition, you should be at the same point. Then we're going to duplicate our tunnel footage, make sure that it's set to normal, and then delete all these effects. Make sure that's turned on. Hit T on your keyboard. Um, hit a keyframe for opacity, drop it down to zero. Go back into your composition, go to the last frame of the zoom, go back into your space composition. This just will make sure you're at the perfect moment in time. Drag this up to 100%. So with this layer on, we're gonna duplicate it again. And then if you hit the drop down arrow, you want to disable time remapping. And then hit T on your keyboard, hit it to 50%, and drag forward so that um, so that this is on the same time frame. We're doing this so that the clip starts playing as it zooms in. You wanna go ahead and delete that layer that we duplicated that's still frozen because we don't need that anymore. That was just kind of a reference so that we could match up the frame here. On the first frame, hit the opacity, set it to zero, um, hit a keyframe for it, then go back and make sure you're on the last frame. Go back into your space composition and make sure the opacity is set to 100%. So what happens here is the layer starts playing and fades in. So now that we have this layer fading in, we have to animate the expansion of this mask. Hit M on your keyboard and then drop down the entire mask properties. Go to mask expansion here, keyframe. Hit U so you can see all keyframes. Go to the last keyframe and then just expand this out so that the whole frame is revealed. And you also wanna keyframe the feather here. So hit F on your keyboard. Maybe set this to like five hit the keyframe, hit you again, and then just go to the last frame and feather it out, you know, to maybe like 105 or something like that, maybe even like 250. If you preview this now, it looks like she fades in and starts playing. I'm also going to drag this max expansion out a little more, so it takes a little bit longer to complete. What also really helps sell the effect, if you see here, the star layer, you know, remains still. So what we wanna do so that the star layer starts to move as well, go into the space background layer and the original outline right here, these two layers, hit Control Shift D and end them. Then our footage that fades on, we want to duplicate that, duplicate the space background image and then drag this above and then trim it up so that it's now being used in, as an alpha mat for that layer. The only problem now is we have to repaste all the effects. From the original outline of Charlie, we need to copy and paste all these effects to the one that is right here. And then we also we also want to hit T on our keyboard and delete this keyframe because we want it to just be at 100% opacity. Now the stars actually start to move. It also creates a cool outline on the border right here that looks pretty cool and artistic. So what we want to do here, set this to 100 and then fade it out over the course you know, of a few frames and then probably want to right click it, keyframe, easy ease. This will just blend everything in. This kind of creates a cool transition into the real world. So now if we go back into our regular composition, we can see this effect starting to take place. Now we just have to do a few adjustments to the camera right here and how it zooms, because obviously it isn't covering this whole portion. So I'm gonna go to the same beginning frame that the zoom starts and the position starts. I'm gonna also create another keyframe for the orientation, and I'm gonna go forward to that last frame. With the layer selected, we want to drag the Z orientation until it looks flat, and then also drag the Y a little bit. And we also want to zoom in a slight bit more and also drag the Y positioning up a little bit. Maybe a little more to like 5,000. If we preview this now, it kind of looks like the mask is expanding too slow. So this is all about dialing in the effect that you like. If you think that this zoom is too fast, all you have to do is take these three keyframes 
and drag them out and then your zoom will be slower. You know, it's all about the effect that you're trying to go for and stylizing it to your own needs. I'm gonna go into the layer right here that fades in. I'm gonna hit U. I'm gonna drag this max mask expansion to not be so slow. I'm also gonna right click it, keyframe, easy ease that one as well. Another thing you wanna do is you wanna enable motion blur in your composition for your space layer. When it zooms, it creates some motion blur, which will make it look a lot more natural. Since we have the star layer set as an additive mode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate it, and then we're gonna change this to normal. I'm gonna set this to T, zero, hit a keyframe for the opacity. So as we start to zoom in here, I'm gonna change this to be 100% right when this finishes up so that it goes to the normal color of your footage. Right click, keyframe, easy ease, you see the pattern there. This makes it so our normal layer kind of fades in and also creates a cool effect with the stars and makes it look like we're kind of traveling into space and it's getting blacker. If we preview that, that's starting to look ridiculously sick, but one of the coolest parts was the space travel. So how are we gonna go about creating that? Select your camera, hit U, and then on this beginning part where your camera starts to zoom, go to that keyframe and then go into the stars tutorial composition. Right here on your camera, you want to select position, go back to your composition and then go to the last frame of your camera zoom, go back to the stars tutorial and then you should be at that time. And then we're just gonna drag this forward in Z position. I'm also gonna right click this final one and click easy ease. If we preview this now, it's going to start spinning and then zoom in when our camera's gonna zoom in and it creates this cool zoom through a 3D particle effect. But now we have to take this and kind of create like a Star Wars light trail. To do this, go into your effects and presets tab, type in echo, drag this onto our solid after the CC ball action effect. We're gonna change the echo time to 0 0.003. Hit U on the camera so we can see the keyframes of that. We're gonna keyframe the number of echoes so right here, um, before the camera starts to move, we're gonna set a keyframe right here in keyframe and make sure that's set to zero. Hit U so you can see that keyframe. And then at the end of this keyframe, set this we're gonna set this to like 50. So this is very computer intensive, but it's essentially gonna create this Star Wars hyperdrive type effect of the stars in your scene. What we're gonna do here, what we do here is go back, back. Sorry, I just got into my inner eye dubs. We really don't need this scene for much after this point. So I'm gonna hit N on my keyboard. I'm gonna trim the composition to work area, click Control M and render this out. Quick time format and click GoPro Cineform. And then navigate to wherever you wanna save this. I'm gonna save this star tutorial zoomer. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I always name things so randomly. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna render this out. It's going to take some time. It's going to look really cool after and it's, it's gonna save a lot of time rendering this out so that you don't have to constantly go back and do it in After Effects. So once that's done, navigate to your file and then drop that into After Effects. Go into your Stars tutorial and just drop this on right here. So as you can see, we have exactly what we had before, but now it's all in a nice GoPro Cineform uncompressed file that isn't gonna take forever for a computer to render. So as you can see, this effect looks very, very dope. I'm gonna go ahead and drop um, some Real Smart Motion Blur onto it. If we go back into our regular composition here, we can preview and see the final effect. One of the issues is you can kind of see the border here before the camera completely zooms in and it kind of breaks up the illusion. So what you want to do to fix that is uh, go back into your space scene. For our normal colored layer right here, I'm just going to select these mask points and move them in way further. So around her head, like right here, and even right here, kind of fade this in. Also, it's smaller ball. I'm also gonna slide these beginning mask expansion keyframes for both the normal color layer and the stars outline, and I'm gonna slide them back so they start a little quicker. It creates kind of a softer stretch. Maybe just drag these keyframes out slightly. And then all we have to do is go in and zoom in the camera so that it zooms in and kind of hides that hard edge. So go back into our regular composition right here on these three keyframes for the position, orientation, and zoom. We're just gonna drag these forward just a little bit. It, now if we preview, that looks a lot more natural and you don't get like the sharp edge. The final effect to kind of polish this off is add a new adjustment layer and make sure it's on the top of your scene. Type in optics compensation. We're gonna drag this effect on Right when the camera starts to zoom on these first keyframes here, we're gonna change the field of view. We're gonna hit a keyframe, hit U on the layer so it brings up all the keyframes for that. We're gonna go forward, it's like right about here. We're gonna drag this up, then we're gonna reverse the lens distortion. And we're gonna drag this up some more. Then we're gonna go forward a little bit more, 
and just set this to zero so it kind of stretches back. I'm also going to set these two keyframes as a easy ease keyframe. It gives the perspective that you're zooming in much faster than you actually are when it kind of distorts the image like that. So that is the final effect. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something. If you have any additional questions, go ahead and comment down below. I respond to every single comment on my videos. Leave me a like if you found this informative and if you didn't leave me a dislike, maybe let me know how I can improve my tutorials on the future. I do take all constructive criticism and try to grow from it. I'm uploading a video every single day for the rest of 2017. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace, bye. Peace, peace. Thank <laughs> you.